It's a cold night. So that kind of sucked. Well, I knew that was going to be an ordeal, but that actually was harder than I was expecting. Well, it's that time of year. The leaves are gone, the days are short, and the snow is starting to fall and it's not going away. But I'm not ready to hang up my paddling gear. I've got time for one more backcountry trip. So I'm heading into Algonquin Park and I'm not expecting to see anyone in there. It's below freezing and there's unsettled weather patterns. But the call of the outdoors is strong and I've never been one to ignore it. Well, things don't always go as planned, and today is a perfect example of that. Uh, I decided, even though winter is well on its way right now, we got some snow that's probably here to stay. It's uh, mid-November. I wanted to do a two-day, an overnight camping trip in Algonquin Park, one of my favorite places, and uh, I was going to explore a new lake, Opiongo, which is the biggest lake in the park go on a good sea kayaking mission. Well, it showed up, I didn't do my homework, and yeah, there's the gates closed. I couldn't get in there. So, change of plan. I'm on a different lake that I've never been to before, and it's a beautiful day, so it should be equally as awesome. Got everything? Good. All right. Oh yeah, it's brisk. <laughs> She's loaded. You know, my plans changed. And with that, there are gonna be some challenges today. One challenge in particular, the trip I had planned was just sea kayaking on the biggest lake in the park, which is about, you know, I was gonna cover about 10 miles, pretty close to 10 miles um, to get to the island I was gonna stay at tonight, camp at. But uh, since that wasn't possible, because the gate was closed, this other route that I'm having to take, it involves a, a portage. A small one, but a portage nonetheless. It's about 400 meters. And you know, if I had, was planning for this trip, I wouldn't have brought a sea kayak because it's a pain in the butt to portage a sea kayak because of all the small bags that it, you have to, dry bags that you have to use to fit into this thing. So, I mean, what it means is I'm gonna have to unload this thing, all the dry bags, and do two different portages. One with the boat, paddles, and whatever I can carry, and then the second one with just all the loose dry bags. And hopefully I can just do it in two. Not ideal, but it's only 400 meters, so. But the challenge of this time of year is I got a good start to the day, but still, it's just the days are so short. You know, it's gonna be dark by 4.45. Well, maybe not dark, but the sun is set by 4.45. It's gonna be dark shortly thereafter by about 5.15, 5.30. It'll be dark, dark. That's not a lot of time, especially when the sun is up around eight. <laughs> you know, right now it's about 11.30 or so. So, I don't have too much time to mess around. I want to get into camp by 2.30, kind of at the latest, so that I can comfortably 
you know, set up to set up uh, camp, get a whole bunch of firewood because a whew, camp without a fire on a in this kind of temperature is miserable. <laughs> but sure is nice right now. I don't feel rushed at this moment. <laughs> where the portage is. I was kind of hoping I'd be able to paddle through whatever was creating the portage, but I didn't even know which way the water was running because there's been no current, but it's, this is, uh, I'm downstream. I'd have to paddle up the rapid. <laughs> I'd like to think that would happen, but I'm gonna take a look. Crazy not to. Hmm. Yeah. Oh well. To the portage we go. Up we go. Yeah. Pretty much bang on what I was expecting or hoping for. It's 2.15. I should be able to find a camp spot by 2.30 and then have about two hours before it gets dark. Two hours to get things together get some firewood get a nice cozy fire going because it's going to get cold tonight it's definitely going to get cold wow just glassy
Ooh, that looks like a nice spot. Oh yeah. South facing. I'm gonna get sunrise and sunset. Yeah. Well, first things first, it's a beautiful campsite, but uh, for that reason, it's pretty popular. And so there's no firewood to be found within easy walking distance here. So I'm gonna head to one of these shorelines where there isn't campsites anywhere near and, and uh, find my wood there. Shouldn't be too hard. So that kind of sucked. <laughs> that was just stupid. I don't even know what happened. I haven't tipped my boat. There was just so much weight with that wood. <sighs> but I got my wood. And uh, now I gotta get my gear, get a fire started. Get my gear up. Get some food in me. That took more out of me than I was expecting it to. That was a full day. All right, here we go. Got my dehydrated meal, hydrating. Got some hot tea, changed into all dry gear, big puffy coat. Got a fire, happy times. It's still so quiet out here too. Another lesson learned. It's been a few lessons on this trip, but that, I couldn't believe how long it took me to get firewood. You know, it was, almost a two hour mission to get firewood because this these lakes are obviously hit pretty hard. They're heavily trafficked through the summer. Winter camping, the days are just so short. You don't have much time. And you, you know, I didn't want to be any later getting a fire going than I was today. 
but that's the lesson learned is either give myself more time next time or choose a lake that has less traffic in the summer months so it's going to be easier to find firewood but got fire all is good now <laughs> Mm -hmm. A moment of truth. <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe a little too much water, but that's okay. I didn't drink enough today. Oh yeah. What do we got anyway? Thai peanut curry. That'll do. Well, bedtime. Now for the toughest part of the day, getting out of this cocoon. It's a cold night. <sighs> Looks like I got some snow. the trees. Coffee is good, but coffee with a little Baileys in the morning on a camp trip. Okay, a little bit more. There we go. This is even better. Now I just wait. See a little sun. I don't have the wood for a fire this morning, but a hot cup of coffee, a hot breakfast on the way, even cold windy morning like this is pretty darn good especially since the sun came out I don't think it's gonna be out for long but pretty nice to have it for a bit if the waves pick up anymore it's gonna be a little challenging loading this kayak 
because it's uh, composite, can't beat against the rock like a plastic boat. And you can't load it on ground and drag it to the water, so I'll have to figure that out. I might have to carry this boat around to a sheltered side because the waves are coming right in here. Oh yeah, this has been used before. Oh yeah, what a difference. Yeah, not on rock either. This is, this is where I'll launch. Do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, this is a kind of trip you don't just jump into. You need to, uh, you know, really have experience in the backcountry and be comfortable in the cold, have the gear, 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 and backup gear. You know, I've, it's been a, a lot of winter camping experiences and, and learnings that have come over the years. One year I learned that you couldn't bring the same food on a winter camping trip because you, uh, it'll freeze if it's cold enough and then you're kind of screwed and we brought stuff that couldn't freeze a buddy and I on a this was gosh 20 25 30 years ago we didn't know what to do and so we keep it thaw we ended up stuffing our uh, sleeping bag with all the food that couldn't freeze so basically we, we made ourselves into one big bear burrito and it was a sleepless night <laughs> In Algonquin Park you know broke all the rules but you know as long as you have the right gear you could be a extremely pleasant trip if you have the wrong gear it could be miserable Who needs a sponge? Just let the water freeze. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's a little chillier today, so we're going with the pogies. It's more the wind. It's still about the same temperature, actually, about five below zero, something like that. But it's the wind. No wind here. That's good. That's about to change. And off we go again. Nice. Nice tailwind. It almost feels like there's no wind because it's almost a perfect tailwind. And I actually started warming up. The name of, name of the game today is going to be avoid sweating, which is going to be hard with the portage up ahead. I wish I had a plastic boat because I think I could seriously consider running the rapid that I have to portage around. And that would be a whole lot nicer than schlepping all this gear and boat around, even though it's only 400 meters. Man, portages with a kayak are nothing like portaging a canoe. I mentioned that I wish this was a canoe. Well, I only have about four or five kilometers, three miles maybe, of a paddle to get back to my truck and head home. With the ice building on the lakes, this is probably gonna be my last overnight of the season. But hopefully it'll be some paddling. The, uh, the white water stays open for a fair bit longer but really nice way to end the season. Beautiful day yesterday. How perfect was that? And then, you know what? It's a little bit of snow, a little bit of weather. It just changed the mood. <laughs> Not a bad thing either. It's kind of sad to see the paddling season come to an end though. But the next one is not that far away. And now I start planning my trips for next year. <laughs>